Yo ho ho, I am ready to go. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday. It is June 26th. Which means tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When the market is shutting down, me and my co-host Taylor are going on. Me and Taylor are there for about an hour and a half. We're taking requests from viewers like you for stocks that you want us to look at. I share stocks with you all week and chances are you've got stocks you're asking for that I'm not covering. So this gives you a chance to throw them at us. I'll go over the information. Taylor will do the charting, which is good folks. I see charting is like making spaghetti. Everybody makes spaghetti sauce. We all basically use the same ingredients. So how come every single one of them tastes different, <laughs> right? Well, that's the way charting is. No two people chart the same. You get my charting all week. Now you get some of Taylor's added to your arsenal. Now, I've got to be fair with you and let you know, if you come to the show, and I'm begging you, please come to the show. If you drop your ticker during the show, chances are I'm not going to get to it. I have to announce that I've got this video, and I do that earlier in the day. And as soon as I put up the announcement, people start dropping their tickers. And I do go by first come, first served. So by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, whew, I've already got all the tickers we can look at. So if you're dropping your ticker during the show, I apologize that I didn't get to it. But I'm telling you this to let you know. When you see my announcement come out tomorrow, wherever you're at, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, drop your ticker in then. Guaranteed it's going to be in the show, and that's going to give me more time to look at it. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays. So what do we like to do on this show? You know what it is. We like to talk about hot penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every single day. I am swimming with them all the time. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find everywhere. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. And I've got one for us. This is Unidoc Health Corporation, ticker UDOCF. Now, it was her chart that caught my attention initially. It's running right now. It's been running for about two days. And she's up over 100%. May have dipped a little, but she has been running strong. Well, normally I don't look at these stocks to share with you because they're rocket stocks. And when they start to run, they're just going to run out of fuel and come crashing back down to earth. And then we got to look for the bounce. Well, I don't think that's the case with this one. I mean, yeah, I expect a pullback, but I don't think she's going to crash. When I came over here going through the news, looking for catalysts, wow, my mind got blowing. We are looking at something very novel here, very creative, something that we need, that we haven't seen before. And as you can tell, I'm excited about it. So I want to share this with you. So Unidoc Health Corporation, ticker UDOCF, she finished today at 62 and a half cents and she was up almost 50% today. Now, this is on the OTCQB, which is better than the OTC pink. <laughs> Literally, they call this tier the better tier. The QB is better because you have to have your financials audited. We are getting actual, factual numbers looked at by a CPA and accounted for. We're getting fundamentals now. These are numbers we can actually use to weigh up the company. Pinks give us numbers, but they're not audited. They're not looked at by a CPA. They're just tallies thrown at us. We can't do a whole lot with that. So this makes a QB tier more transparent, more trustworthy. And they've got all the green ticks over here we like to see, a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. They've also got independent directors listed. That's a good thing on this site. Whenever you want to uplist, you have to have independent directors. And on this site, when you're serious about it, you're just not talking, you're actually doing something about it, you list your independent directors over here. So who knows? This may be for uplisting to the QB, which they just did here not too long ago, or maybe they got plans to go higher. This 12G3-2B certified, this is because it's a Canadian company. This means they have filed with the SEC and FINRA everything they need to for being a foreign company. So we got no problems with this company. So let's get into what it is that they do. I found this mind blowing. I jumped to conclusions in the beginning and the deeper I got, the more I realized I was completely wrong. And I'm going to expect that's going to happen with you too. So I'm going to try to straighten you out. But 
I want to lead you into it first. So we're going to look at this company like you peel an onion, one layer at a time. And we're going to start right here. Unidoc Health Corporation is a virtual health telemedicine solutions company. The company's primary offering will be the virtual care solutions model, a proprietary, customizable, and comprehensive telehealth solution that integrates a range of physical products, web-based services, and analytical tools, along with the access to the company's developing network of healthcare providers, pharmacies, and hospitals. Now, are you listening really close? Because I get the feeling you're imagining telehealth, telemedicine as somebody signing in online to a website, connecting through Zoom or something, talking to their physician, right? Wrong. That's what I thought too. That is not what this is. And your first clue of that should have been this right here. Integrating a range of physical products. How do you do that? With a digital video, how do you integrate digital products? So that is not what we're talking about. What are we talking about? Well, let's peel another layer of this onion back and see what we get. I've jumped into the most recent financial to get this description. The company's principal offering is that virtual care solution model. This is a comprehensive telemedicine and telehealth solution that aims to increase access to and the quality of healthcare throughout Canada. This is where they initially started from, but as you're going to see, they're in a lot more places around the world right now. The virtual care solution model integrates a range of physical products, web-based services, and analytical tools to access the company's network of healthcare providers, pharmacies, and hospitals into an easy to use and centralized proprietary web-based application. Now you saw that cube. What is that cube? Do you look at it? Do you hold it? What do you do? <laughs> no, that's not what you do. Let's peel back another layer here. What is eHealth? Okay. Look at these pictures here, folks. This is what we're looking at. That cube is a big cube. It's a walk-in cube. You're going to get another picture here in a minute. This is what they tell us about this. What is eHealth? This is the integration of information and communication technologies in the health sector. Now, this is something that you need to recognize because this is just exploding too fast to keep up with. This combines information technologies with specialized diagnostics. We're talking devices and communication hardware powered by AI. They have just gotten involved with AI for all of this telehealth for remote consultations designed for easy patient access. Now I'm going to show you a bigger picture, but this is what's on the inside. You're getting a chair. Now it's a little different. You're going to see a different one, but all the devices that you're going to be doing diagnostic testings with are given to you so that while you're talking to your physician, you can do these things, right? As I said, they are now involving AI. They have partners, and this is what really set me at ease. They've got big partners. Look at this. Hewitt Packard, Intel, DocBox, AMD, Dedalus. <laughs> I probably said that one wrong. The fact of the matter is we've got huge companies aligned with this company for a couple years. They've been working together for a while. So I know this company isn't going anywhere, and what they've got must be valid, must be valuable. So they tell us here, AI powered health is the future of healthcare and it just got smarter. By blending artificial intelligence algorithms with state of the art diagnostics, high speed access and high definition communications equipment, eHealth connects doctors, clinicians and patients and enables them to access high quality care in innovative new ways. This AI is going to be able to grab your information from wherever it's at, your personal physician, the hospital, the x-ray lab, and whatever format it's in, it can read it. And it's going to collaborate all that information and it's going to help your doctor to be able to help you. Now, this is what I want to point out because this is really what it's about. It is not telecommunication that they're primarily working with. It is these satellite medical clinics, these huge cubes, H 
three health cubes. They are selling around the world. This is walk up service. You just come in, sit down, hook up, talk to your physician, use your diagnostic machines. But that's not the only machine they've got. They've got big plans here. This is a list of the things they are focused on right now. Kiosks and self-test centers. Now, when I think of this, I think of Walmart and the blood pressure machine. You just sit down and sh -sh 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 do it and it's free, right? So I'm thinking that sort of stuff. Remote lab testers. Now, I'd give you more information if I had it, but they don't give us any more information. I'm having to speculate here. Remote lab testers. Well, I see a card here. What, do you take a card and maybe put a blood sample on it or a fecal sample or some fluid sample, put it in the machine and it diagnoses your sample and spits out your answers? I don't know. We also have self-check-in and testing with AI-powered triage assistant. Had no clue. Can't even speculate. I wish we did have more information. How about this one? This one blows my mind. Automatic pharma dispensing machines. We've been seeing this possibility with cannabis. And of course, you have to verify the person who's getting the cannabis that they're old enough, they are who they are. Well, that's what this machine's gonna have to do, verify not only the person, but verify the prescription, the doctor, all of that stuff. Then you may have to set them up like ATM machines. They may need to be bolted to the ground with concrete and metal all around them because they're drugs and we know how people can get with drugs. So this could be a tricky situation. And then the last one, access to doctors and hospital networks. And obviously that's the big thing, getting to physicians, clinicians, uh, psychologists, whoever you need to talk to. This is what they are focused on. And I told you that they are working in Canada initially. Well, I wanna show you what they've been doing over the last year. And I think this is really important because we're gonna go look at their financials and I'm gonna be honest, they confuse me. I'll be straight up with you right now. They don't have any and I don't get it. I think that they are building up somewhere. Something's happening and you can come to your own conclusions but after I read everything here, you've gotta figure money is building up somewhere and about to pour out and I'm hoping we're gonna see it soon. So as I said, this came out uh, on their most recent financial. On April 28th of last year, the company announced that it had entered into a joint marketing agreement with Hewitt Packard for the purposes of co-marketing activities for current and future collaborations. The agreement positions Unidoc to provide a supply of customizable telehealth cubes, enclosures, and equipment along with related services, including software pertaining to the virtual care solutions model. June of last year, the company announced that its partner, Hewitt Packard, had received a purchase order for 10 H3 cubes to be supplied to Data Parsec of Rome, Italy. 10 of those cubes being sold a year ago. September of last year, the company announced it had entered into a service agreement with the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of Americas, known as FANA. And on September of last year, the company announced it had entered into a joint marketing service agreement with EGS Health for the purposes of co-marketing and service activities for the current and future collaborations across the Caribbeans. Holy cow. So we're in the Caribbeans, we're in FANA, we're in Italy, we're in Canada. Then in December, the company announced that it had entered into a reseller agreement to partner its virtual care solutions model kiosks, which we don't know a lot about, with Meta Orbs LLC. So as you can see, the company's been busy doing a lot just in the last year. They've been selling, they've been making deals. You would think there'd be some money somewhere. So I've got to imagine that it's gonna show up. Bloody hell. You'd think I'd remember to turn my phone off when I'm making videos. The last piece of information I want to share with you is actually key. This is the primary reason I'm sharing this stock with you. There is a huge opportunity sitting in front of this company right now that they are jumping on. The company started their business in Canada, had some great success. Shuffled on over into Europe, had more success. 
Now they've got their eye on the United States. They tell us here that North American e-healthcare is still in its infancy. Following a successful path in Europe, we're preparing to disrupt the system in North America. Now with the aid of AI, the opportunity has become game changing. They tell us globally that two thirds of patients are ready to upgrade to virtual care. Two thirds of the whole world, that's a huge market with only 8% having already tried it. Now they tell us in 2022, the market was just over a hundred billion dollars. And by 2032, it's supposed to be darn near $900 billion. That's globally. Let's just look at the U.S. In the U.S. alone, the e-health market was valued at $8.3 billion in 2019. They expect that to jump to $476 billion by 2032. Folks, that is a humongous increase. You are talking eight years. Eight years, we are going to go from eight to 476. That is a giant jump. And this company is doing something so innovative, so novel that I don't see how it can't take off. Now, again, they are dealing with AI, which is another infancy market. It is just starting to pick up steam right now. Globally in 2022, the AI market, and I didn't know it was this high, but they tell us here it was $428 billion in 2022. One year later, it jumped $90 billion to $515 billion. And they tell us that by 2030, it's supposed to be over $2 trillion. And I think that's a guesstimate. I don't think anybody has a clue how big it's going to get. AI in healthcare grew from 11 billion in 2021 to 15 billion in 2022. That's jumped 4 billion. And by 2030, they expect that 15 billion to be 272 billion. But it's not going to just make money for everybody. It's going to give us convenience. We're going to be able to get things done faster. <laughs> As you would expect with AI. AI is very quick. Well, they tell us when you were making a doctor's appointment back in 2004, it would take about three weeks, 21 days before you could see your doctor. And they said in 2022, it increased to 26 days. What? 26 days before I can see my doctor? <laughs> a lot can happen in 26 days. I could get healthy. They'd lose an opportunity to make money. I could get worse. I could die. So this isn't good. So dealing with these walk-up clinics, if you will, there is no waiting period. You just go on in and get it taken care of. I think it is hot, folks. All right, I think I basically covered as much information as I need to cover with you. There is more information to look at, so don't shy away from the due diligence, folks. You know what I always say, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> no, it's not the end of the show. I'm just saying it because it's true. All right, let's go take a look at that stock now and get some information about that. Relative volume for the company, pretty low. Over the last 30 days, she's been averaging about 133,000 shares on the OTC market. Today, we did 2.8 billion shares for the entire OTC market, all 12,381 companies. They had to divvy those shares up. And I'll tell you what, a lot of companies got nothing today. A lot. We did kick this up to 340,000. We're still under the radar. Share structure for the company. Oh yeah, not bad. Outstanding share count is under 50 million. It's at 42 million. Insiders own just about 5 million shares. So we should have somewhere in the high 30s, 37, 38 million, somewhere around there. Market cap for the company, we are currently at about 17 million. Financials, this is where I really got confused, folks. We have nothing annually, not a penny. We have nothing quarterly, nothing. What about our balance sheet? Oh, please be something here. All right, we have to add three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts. So here we got $61,000 roughly in the bank. Total assets, we have 368,000, pretty minimal. And total liabilities is higher. 
at his 1.4 million. So we are holding deficit in this company of about a million dollars. Let's see what we have over here for disclosures. And eh, we got nothing since 2021 and just the recent financial, which I've been diving in and out of. So what we've got now is the news. And oh my God, is there a lot of news? There really is. And again, I got confused here. I looked at the chart and I tried to correlate things that happen on the chart to news or filings. Well, when I was looking at the chart, I was trying to correlate something and it doesn't correlate right. And I'll show you where. We're going to go all the way back here. We are really back. I am back here to April 2022. But I want you to see that the company is doing business, not just in Canada, not just in Europe. Unidoc signs definitive agreement to provide telehealth services in Ghana. The company unveils H3 Cube at the American Telehealth Conference. That was in April of 2022. So they've had this for a while. Unidoc signs definitive agreement with Siroch Health and Wellness. That's another deal they made. The company signs a definitive agreement to provide telehealth services to Nigeria. The company signs definitive agreement to provide telehealth services to Kenya. So they're in Africa as well. Now, this is where I have a question pop up looking at the charts and looking at the news. This piece of news right here is the last piece of news in 2022. It is August of 2022. The next piece of news we get is December of 2023. You are talking a 15 month silent period. We had nothing happening here and I don't know what was going on. And here's why I was curious. When I look at the chart, the chart starts in July of last year. So I thought maybe they changed their ticker. Maybe they changed their name, something like that. So I went through their filings. Nope. They changed their ticker back in 2021. So it isn't that. I can't find why we have a new chart, why the chart doesn't go back any further than that, especially considering I got news all the way back here to 2022. Why does the chart start in 2023? Just letting you know. So now let's look at news that's more current, starting from 2023. Unidoc accesses physician network and AI patient intake technology via Meta Orbis Agreement, which we read. That was the last thing we read in their financials. Unidoc and Hewitt Packard entered OEM Agreement. Now, did I pull this one up? I did. This one is important. This is the only piece of news we're actually going to jump into. Unidoc Health Corps, an innovator in the e-health sector, is pleased to announce that it has entered into an original equipment manufacturer agreement. This is an additional agreement with Hewitt Packard which permits the integration of HP products into the development and the manufacturing process of the Unidoc H3 Health Cube and the virtual care solutions model. Unidoc gains the ability now to sell integrated HP products worldwide. The all-inclusive HP SKUs will be available for resale globally. So not only do they have the backing of HP, they're now putting HP products into their cubes. Boy, I'd really like to get a nice, decent picture of this cube. Back to that news. We are looking now at April of 2024. The company expands AI health services to Alaska, expands AI capabilities to emergency room patients. H3 Cube designated as the preferred equipment for e-health by Italian government. Unidoc to supply AI-assisted e-health cubes to aid group. The aid group bought three. They are looking to buy a total of 15. Unidoc receives purchase order from HP Inc. for an additional 10 AI equipped H3 health cubes. We read about 10 a year ago. Now we've got another 10. So we've got three here, 10 here, 10 back there. Where's the money? Come on, where's the money? Who's getting the money? Whose bank account is that going into? Now, in the financials, they did say that they had not made any revenues up till December 2023. And we're waiting. I do believe we're waiting for a financial to come out right now. Let's see here. Before I jump away from here, 
and the company expands presence in Europe. Again, they're talking about another area in Rome. They sold another one of these cubes to a hospital somewhere in Italy. So they're selling the dog out of these things. Where's the money? So let's see about their disclosures. Um, 12, there's their annual report, their quarterly report. And we have certification, but we do not. Wait a minute. Nope, that's 2023. No, we got nothing here for 2024. So we are waiting for the next financial. And I want to see it. Because to me, it sounds like there should be money somewhere. You sold 10 of these cubes a year ago. You've sold 10 more, three more. Come on. Do you have any kiosks up? There has got to be some money flowing somewhere. And if there isn't, there probably is going to be. But as I said, the chart is hot right now. She's been running for the last two days. We have lots of news. We see it is just basically expanding business. They're just getting further and further out there. We're just waiting to see money. And as far as I'm concerned, as soon as we see money, this company is probably going to launch. That's why I like it. It is a novel concept we have never seen before. And this country is waiting for something going to the doctor, going to the hospital. We've been doing that for a long time. It's problematic. It's not convenient. Talking online, it's good for some things, but there's a lot of things we can't do there. So I think this is the next stage in evolution for medical solutions. Don't you? All right, let's go take a look at that chart now. Nothing new under the sun. We're going to do the same old, same old. We're going to chart on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We are looking at ticker UDOCF. This is Unidoc Health. And I got it opened up to a one day, one year chart. And would you believe this is the entire chart? There is nothing more to share with you, which is more than confusing. We just got done looking at a whole bunch of news from 2022. I just got done reading in the most recent financial. They changed their ticker in 2021. Well, you do get a new chart when you change your ticker. But this chart doesn't go any further back than July 3rd of 2023. Where's the rest of the chart? I have no clue. This is all we've got to work with and we're going to work it, baby. So whatever happened on July 3rd, she came on, was there at about 34, 35 cents. And she jumped fast and hard, almost 300% to a 52 week high of just over 94 cents. She then fell to a 52-week low of 28 cents. From there, she worked her way back up to 73 cents and has just been dribbling downhill ever since until the last two days when she decided to jump. Now, keep in mind, this is a one-day, one-year chart, meaning every bar on the chart represents an entire day of trading. These red lines here represent months in between each one. Well, look. We've got one bar in each month. That means we had one day of trading every month. And it may have only been one trade in one minute. We have no idea. There was not a lot of trading going on here. And then something changed. April of 2023, volume came into the picture and has not left. Plus, we're getting a lot more trading days. April had lots of days. May had more. And June had even more than that. And now it's getting strong. Speaking of getting strong, look at those oscillators. They're all going to the moon. Houston is celebrating right now. Every single one of them is very, very strong. Let's come on down to our six-month, four-hour view. It's basically the same thing. There's our low bubble of 28 cents. We hit that high of 73 cents, very short-lived. We did that April 19th. She came back down to her normal area and then she took this plunge all the way down to about 32 cents. And two days ago, she was at 33 cents. She jumped up to 66 cents, which is 100% gains. And that's where she's at right now. She has not fallen. She has not pulled back. Not as far as I can see. We'll check that out on the five minute chart. But right now, it looks like she is stuck up there. She has been floating on her nine day. But look, our nine day is way down here way down here. Our price is way up there. That's a big stretch. Think of there being rubber bands between the top of the price and the SMA. Also rubber bands between each of the SMAs. If you stretch them too far, 
pow, they come slamming back and they can pass. They can just go flying back and that's when you get your big drops. So I'd be watching for a pullback right now. This needs to come back down closer to that nine day SMA. Our oscillators. Oh goodness, folks, look at this. Picture perfect. PPO is climbing hard and fast, just like our MACD. And look at the size of those green bars. That shows you positive momentum. And look at our RSI. She blasted into outer space, hit 77, pulled back, and now she is shooting again. Wow. Look at the volume. Volume is getting stronger and stronger. And do not overlook our SMAs. Every single one of them is turned up and starting to climb. We don't have to worry about the 200. We don't have one of those yet. Take a look at our one hour view. So over the last 20 days, she's basically been in a downtrend underneath our 200, hitting this low bubble underneath everything at 32 cents. Went sideways, where? On top of our 200 day haul. She finally got on that. She is sitting on it. And then where did she bounce from? She bounced from her 200 haul up to the 50 and shot to the 200, through the 200 and to the moon. She is climbing hard and furious here, hitting that high bubble of 66 cents today. And it looks like she is stuck up there. Again, all of our SMAs are perfectly combed, nice and even flowing over that 200 day SMA. These are gonna be called golden crosses. When they cross the 200, it's like a turbo boost to the price. <laughs> because the investors like seeing it. Oscillators, still picture perfect. Every single one of them is climbing hard and fast right now. I'm loving this, folks. Coming down to our five day, five minute. Woo! So there's our flat, right? We had our low bubble came up, tried to get over the 200, showing a little bit of enthusiasm, a little bit of initiative, and then pow, she took off. Just took off here from that 33 cents to 66 cents. Steady climb. She pulled back off her nine day. She hit her 20 day and then dropped all the way through these strong SMAs. Our 50 day SMA and that is our 200 haul. And we got a 200 day SMA here. So this actually looked good to me here, folks. That spike coming down through all the SMAs deep into the dirt. I call it a pillar. When you build something tall, you have to put in a deep foundation to keep it from tipping one side or the other. That to me looks like a foundation. And if they pop right back up real fast, you know it is. And that's what normally happens when you see sideways activity, a little bit of a dip and then a, a wick. We're not talking about the full bar. We're just talking the wick goes through strong SMAs deep, deeper than normal. That's abnormal. I normally expect a big bounce back up and a climb because she's got a pillar in to steady herself. And she's been floating on that nine day SMA all day today. Once she hit the 20 day, pushed herself back up. This is really sweet folks. Look how close all of our SMAs are all in the right order. Nine, 20. Uh oh, I'm wrong. We got to get that 200 haul underneath our 50. It needs to be down here. Still, still, I don't want to scare you because this looks really good. Oscillators, we're still pushing up and climbing on our PPO, percentage price oscillator, still climbing on our MACD, and we are pushing up on our RSI. I really like it, folks. I am expecting a pullback, but once a financial comes out, if they report any money, I'm expecting this thing to skyrocket. She has the potential to be a first mover in this country with something we've never seen before, which could be ultimately the way we live our lives from now on. Instead of going to the doctor or the hospital, we're going to go to one of these cubes, one of these pods, and we're going to step inside and we're going to diagnose ourselves with the doctor. Don't you think so? Do some more due diligence. See if you get as excited as I am. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.